Hello and welcome to the patch rundown for Thrawn's Revenge Imperial Civil War 2.3.4. This version just came out yesterday on Steam. It's up now for anyone who wants to subscribe to the mod on uh, the Steam Workshop. There will be a link in the description or if you are already subscribed, it will automatically update for you. We're going to quickly go over a lot of the new features that were added with this and some of the changes and also talk a little bit about what's to come. Uh, so first off, there were a few major mechanics added to the mod, especially on the galactic level. The most important of these is the uh, planet influence level, where each of your planets has a loyalty level between 1 and 10. And these will have different impacts and uh, be based on different things depending on which faction you're playing and which planet it is. So the universal effect of this is that it will change how much income you're getting from each planet. If you have a planet that has an influence level of 1, it's going to have a lot less income coming from it than a planet with an influence level of 10. Uh, there is a guide in game that goes over exactly what the effects are and what the requirements are. Uh, some, in some cases this will be unique units you can recruit, like if you control Mandalore and you have 10 influence there, you'll be able to build Kadabe cruisers. If you control Hapen planets, you'll be able to build Hapen units there. We did a preview video for this earlier, and this will also play into a lot of the um, a lot of the government mechanics, which is the second feature. But I will say that the point of the influence mechanics is not just to add a bunch of random recruitable units. That is going to be one effect on certain planets, but there will also be other gameplay effects to it, and we're not just looking for an excuse to throw in those units. Uh, so the second mechanic is the government mechanics for the New Republic, which is the chief of state elections. Each faction is going to have a set of government mechanics on the galactic level. The first are going to be the New Republic in this patch, and then next we'll be working on the Imperial factions. Uh, eventually, every faction will have a set of unique mechanics that helps them play a bit differently on the galactic level. So with Chief of State Elections, there are a bunch of Chief of State options for the New Republic. Uh, in this release, it is Mon Mothma, Leia, and Borsphalia. Uh, each of these have different effects. Right now, the uh, the New Republic one is, or sorry, the Mon Mothma one is just influence on Chandrilla. She is going to tie into a mechanic that's coming up in the next patch. Uh, so the real benefits are going to come from Leia and Borsk right now, and then there are going to be other factors we add for planet influence as well as other uh, chief of state choices. We've got three or four already planned, uh, including Ponk Gaverson, who's going to come in with uh, vassal factions when that comes next uh, next patch as well. But uh, so Borsk is going to give intel on planets around all of your planets. So it's like having uh, a long range scanner building from the base game on all of your planets. And Leia is going to bump up the influence level on all of your planets by one. So each of them have a pretty strong and pretty uh, unique bonus that uh, we're we're hoping that there will be a pretty a pretty decent split between all of them. And also in the future, there's going to be unique heroes that you can recruit when you have any given chief of state. Uh, right now, Borsphalia also gives the New Republic access to the Bothan Assault Cruiser research. Uh, so we are working towards making some of those things a bit more reliant on other factors than just pure era. So that'll actually be the topic of another news post probably in the next week or so. The next major change is that there have been a lot of changes to the environment sets for land and space. Uh, space maps have been given a lot of new prop assets. The lighting has been changed across all of them. So the way we're doing low orbit maps has been changed and you should start seeing a few more of those come in. There's a work in progress version of Ecumenopolis planets. Uh, for low orbit maps. That's planets like Coruscant. Uh, that asset is going to be updated a fair bit, but you should start seeing some more of those pop up every now and then. Uh, and maybe something that we're able to patch in between major releases, uh, but keep an eye out for that. It'll, so far it has really helped bring up the visual uh, aesthetics of the mod, and we're going to keep moving along that path. There has been a major change to how fighter balance works. Uh, so dogfights should go a little bit faster. In previous versions, they were dragging on a fair bit. So you'd be sitting there for most of the battle with the same dogfight going on. Now it should resolve a bit more quickly. Uh, there should be a bit more risk in using fighters in certain situations that there wasn't before. And the way they are balanced against each other has changed a lot. Uh, so you'll notice a lot of changes there. There's also been a ton of new fighters added to the Warlord factions. Uh, 
So Missile Boat, XG-1, TIE Terror, TIE Oppressor, TIE Aggressor, and TIE Sentinel. Uh, there's also been the Aggressor Fighter added for the Mandalorians, which is basically the IG-2000, but in Starfighter form. Uh, so each of the Warlords should have a couple new fighters to play with. So uh, you'll notice, especially for Zinge, who I believe has the Terror and Oppressor, uh, everyone else got at least one as well. There were a few other units added. The Repulsor Sled, which is a ground unit for, I for the Aridu Authority. The Greater Maldrude has the Ads Destroyer, which is a small uh, frigate slash corvette size ship. Uh, they also got Bark Speeders to replace the regular uh, scout bikes. And the Hapens have been given the Beta Cruiser, which is in kind of a work in progress state. But uh, it is now present on some of their starting planets and also in instant action. Uh, Warlord Zinge has been given the ability to recruit random pirate fleets, so you'll get a random assortment of units and hero, uh, or and a hero when you buy those. So Zinge is uh, a faction that hasn't gotten a lot of attention since we released it. Um, but now with the Ride of Authority just needing the Asserter before their initial plans are done, uh, we're going to start working a little bit more on Zinge and the Greater Maldrude. Uh, the TIE Avenger has a new model now. Before it was using Vader's uh, TIE Advanced model as a placeholder, so now that should be that should look proper. Uh, as I mentioned with Instant Action, the Hapens are now, pre now present. Next up we'll probably have the Empire of the Hand added and the CSA, and then we'll work on the Warlords after that. Uh, and soon we should hopefully have it so that we can uh, allow players to play as different factions rather than just starting as the Empire. There have been some other edits to the Galactic Level's appearance. Uh, the the star particles on the Galactic Map have been changed so they look like actual stars instead of just weird snow. Uh, it's also been spread a bit more smoothly throughout the galaxy, less concentrated in the core. There are a few new particles on that level that are also work in progress, one representing the Deep Core, one representing the Hapes Consortium, or the Hapes Cluster. So uh, those are going to be played around with as we progress here, but we've also played with the camera a bit, uh, so everything should look a little bit cleaner on that level. Uh, the, UI the UI has also been modified on the galactic level to accommodate the new buttons for your political menu, which is a new uh, build tab, which is where you're going to choose your chief of state of the New Republic. You'll recruit the heroes that I was mentioning there as well, and make any other political decisions that come in with the influence mechanics, uh, government mechanics, and all that. This does unfortunately mean that we are no longer able to support multiplayer Galactic Conquest. The older versions of the mod are going to remain on Mod Database if you would like to go back and revisit those, uh, but it's just impossible to keep up with the changes that are necessary. Every change we make for single player means going back into multiplayer and stripping it out, which is kind of like the worst work to have to do because it's a mode that no one really plays, one that's not especially moddable, one that's not especially stable, and it's not something we can mod much. So there's really nothing we get out of continuing to work on that just to keep it in the same state it was when people could just go and download uh, 2.3.3 if they really want to play those maps. Uh, but we're still going to continue to support Skirmish, uh, multiplayer Skirmish, that works fine. Uh, and as well as, of course, single-player Skirmish and Galactic Conquest. Uh, there has been some bug fixes where in uh, Skirmish the AI wasn't capturing mines properly, so that should be working. Uh, and we've also fixed a few crashing instances in both the Galactic level and when starting ground ma or ground battles. Uh, we we believe we've tracked the ground battle crash crashes when you click Begin Battle to... Uh, to issues with environment sets where sky domes weren't set up properly. So Valerie has been going through and trying to find all the instances of those and fix them. Uh, so that should hopefully be gone as of today or tomorrow. Uh, we're going to continue to keep an eye on that. Uh, there is a bug report section on the Discord server. If you look in the description, there's a link to that if you're not in it already. If you do run into that, then just pop it in there and we'll take a look at the map. Uh, finally, there's been some other changes and fixes as well, uh, but we've gone over all the notable ones so far. It's been 10 minutes already, so uh, 
yeah, just a, a bunch of other small text changes, uh, slight balance tweaks and all that. But I'm going to quickly talk about stuff to come in the next version as well as Fall of the Republic. And, but other than that, that's going to be the overview of 2.3.4. Uh, so for 2.3.5, we are focusing on adding the ship crew resource, which we haven't done a preview video for yet, uh, but that'll get announced soon. Uh, so that'll tie into a lot of government mechanics as well. But the important thing is that Fall of the Republic will be starting in beta soon. That's going to be what we focus all of our effort on from now until this time that beta starts. It's really just getting a bunch of the story stuff done for the Republic and CIS so that it feels a bit more fleshed out and a bit more lively. Uh, but we're very close with that. It's going pretty smoothly, so we're, uh, we're pretty sure it should be in beta within the next couple weeks. So hope you guys are enjoying 2.3.4. Uh, and hope you're looking forward to 2.3.5 and Father Republic. Thanks for watching. If you want to keep getting updates on mod content as it's done, as well as watch the preview playthroughs I do, uh, you can subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you've enjoyed the mods, leave a like. Uh, and if you would like to yell at me in the comments because we broke something, I suppose you can do that as well. But thanks for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye.